Hello and welcome to today's YouTube episode. My name is Amelia. On today's sewing adventure, we are going to be looking in detail at the Megan Nielsen Ash Jeans pattern. And I'm gonna be telling you all about how I've found making jeans over the last couple of years. And I'm also going to be showing you the Agnes pajamas that I recently made and my button stash as well. So let's get started. So it was about four years ago now where I decided that I wasn't going to buy clothes anymore. I was only going to make them, which has meant that I've had to think about all areas of my wardrobe. And I do really enjoy wearing jeans. So my old jeans started to wear out, which meant that I had to think of a pattern that I would like to make and a style that I would like to wear. So I researched online, as you do. And I came up with the Megan Nelson Ash Jeans, which is this pattern here. And I decided to buy the paper pattern because I really like having the instruction booklet that you can just kind of leave open, read over and over again. And it's much easier than having the instructions on your phone um, for something a bit more complicated like jeans. So the first pair of jeans that I made is this pair here. And I actually made them in July of 2022. And I have worn these jeans a lot and they are actually getting pretty thin around some areas. They do need a bit of an iron, but you get the idea. And I just bought some cheap fabric from, I can't even remember where, and I just thought, I'm gonna go for it, and I did. And I do wear these jeans a lot, and they're a really good color for summer. Now, I didn't add all of the features, so I didn't actually add belt loops to these ones. So they're quite basic, really, in a way. But it was fun to experiment with all the different top stitching and all of the different techniques that it takes to make jeans. And it was a good first attempt. So because this fabric didn't cost me a lot, I didn't make a twirl. I just went straight into making the jeans and just thought, well, it'll be a learning experience and I can always buy more if I need to or alter them if I can. So I remember they were quite tight around the knees. So I did have to unpick this outside seam just to give myself a little bit more room in the leg. But apart from that, they were actually fine. And the size I made was an eight around the waist and a 10 around the hips. And they, they just fitted really nicely. So that is the size that I've been making since then. So one fun feature that you can do if you make your own jeans is um, the pocket bag fabric. So the pocket bag fabric for this is actually Liberty Dinosaurs, which I love. And I love the fact that they're just in there and I can put my hands in and it's quite fun. And the other feature that I've made on all my jeans is instead of using the um, typical jeans fastening on the waistband, I've used quite a flat button. And the reason for that is so that when I'm wearing it, it doesn't stick out and kind of add bulk to my tummy area. So I made these blue jeans in the summer and they're quite lightweight. And then I thought I need did some jeans for the winter. So I decided to make these black denim jeans, which are really good for the winter. They're slightly thicker as well, so they're slightly warmer too. As you can see, I have used maroon top stitching for these ones. Just when you make your own jeans, you can do little details like that and you can customize them however you want. And I thought that the maroon looked really lovely. Obviously I've matched it with a maroon flat button. And then I have used a maroon zipper as well because I had that zipper in my stash. The pocket bags for these ones is this quilting cotton, these lovely hands with the hearts in them. So these became my winter jeans and they fit really well. And I have worn these a lot too. So I made both of these pairs of jeans in 2020 and then I decided that I probably needed another pair of jeans and it would be good to have a darker pair of jeans. So I've got summer covered, I've got winter covered, but it's always nice to have this kind of indigo um, pair of jeans to wear as well. So 
I used the traditional um, denim top stitching thread on these ones and I added some extra features. So this is the first pair of jeans I made that I added to the belt loops to. And I also added this tag from Kylie and the Machine that says made with love. <coughs> I still have the flat button on the front um, so that it reduces bulk in my tummy area. And this fabric, this denim, was from Fabric Godmother. And I really like this. It's got such a lovely weight to it. It's a bit heavier than the other blue jeans that I made earlier. Um, obviously, it's probably better quality. And it's got a really decent amount of stretch in it. So these are actually super comfortable. And these now are the jeans that I wear the most. And with it being winter as well, they are a little bit warmer because they're slightly heavier weight too. The pocket bags I used for these jeans is this lovely cotton which has got little dogs the same shape as Patsy on them. So that's a really lovely detail which I have used on these ones too. And then over Christmas I decided that I needed some pink jeans and I made some really lovely pink jeans which I adored making and I used matching top stitching thread and I was really pleased with how they were turning out and I got right to the end and I tried them on and I couldn't get them up. And then I was a bit worried because it was over Christmas and I thought it was because I'd eaten too much food. <laughs> but then I tried on my other jeans and they still fitted. So what I discovered was that these do not have enough stretch percentage in them. So they don't stretch enough. So the reason why I can't wear these is because they don't stretch enough and basically I can't get them up. So I decided again obviously to go for the belt loops, I need to finish them and then I've decided that I'm just going to take these to a charity shop because I can't wear them and someone I'm sure will love to have some really pretty pink jeans in their wardrobe I am sure. So that really got me thinking about how important it is to choose the right fabric for the pattern that you are making. And it is a stretch denim, um, but obviously the stretch percentage isn't high enough. So I just bought it thinking, oh great, it's lovely, it's pink stretch denim, they'll be fantastic. And I didn't really think too much about it until I went to try them on and they didn't fit. So I suppose that is a good lesson to learn and it is a mistake that I will not be making again. So this is the most recent pair of jeans I have made. They are green. And I got this stretch denim from Sew Me Sunshine. It is the correct percentage of stretch, which is great. They do fit me. They were lots of fun to make. As you can see, I've used matching top stitching thread. I've used this Wahoo tag from Kylie and the Machine. And on the inside, I've used the Hey Sew Sister tag. I did use the belt loops on this one just because I think they make them look more finished on the whole and again I've used a flat button at the front too. So I'm really looking forward to wearing these in the future. The pocket bags that I have used for these ones, I used the um, viscose scraps from my Marnie blouse. So some really lovely floral detail in there as well. So if you are looking for a pair of stretch fitted jeans, then I would definitely recommend the Megan Nielsen Ash jeans. They're brilliant. The instructions are fantastic. They take you through step by step. They've got these really brilliant pictures. They even tell you what thread to use. Um, for every step, it tells you what thread you should use, whether it's top stitch thread or whether it's regular thread. They tell you the seam allowance for every step, so they're very clear, and I'm sure that if you want to make jeans, then your jeans will turn out successfully if you use this pattern. Um, and I would recommend that if you aren't going to make a twirl, then you just kind of use fabric that you're not too precious about, that doesn't cost too much money for your first pair, and kind of assess it and see how you go from there. So now I'm going to talk about my Agnes pyjamas that I planned in my last YouTube episode, which was shopping in my stash. So I don't know if you remember, but I chose this beautiful fabric that was from Hey Sew Sister, and I decided to make the Agnes pyjama set, and it's out of this beautiful brushed cotton fabric. 
Now, a few things about the Agnes pyjamas is they have this really lovely bat wing sleeve, which means that you don't have to insert a sleeve, so it makes the construction quite simple which is really lovely and also it makes them super comfortable as well because you don't have seams around the shoulders for pyjamas. They also have this back centre back seam which I was a bit worried about but I think overall, I know it's not perfect but I think overall I matched it quite well. The shorts are really comfortable as well. You should be able to see a picture of me on the screen wearing them both, the top and the shorts together. More than anything, just to mark the back of the shorts, I put this Kylie and the Machine label in the back. I thought that it did match quite nicely to the Hey so Sister label. Um, and it's just really helpful when you're getting dressed at night time. You don't have to think too carefully about what way you're going to put your shorts on. A few other features of these Agnes pyjamas is this really lovely label that was also from Hey so Sister which says you look lovely and what a fantastic way to start or end your day with that little message. Um, I also chose buttons from my stash but I didn't have five that matched so they're actually five different buttons but I quite like that as a feature and I have done that on a few other garments as well and I think it's just quite a nice way to use buttons I mean things don't always have to match so what I'll do in a minute is I'll show you some of the other garments that I've done that on and I thought we could look at my button stash as well another fun thing about the Agnes pajamas is that they are known as what is called secret pajamas and a lot of people use this shirt pattern and make it to wear not as pajamas but just as ordinary clothes now, on the screen at the moment, you should be able to see a photo of me wearing this pyjama top with my new green jeans that we talked about earlier. And I think that it actually looks really lovely. So what I'm planning now in the future is to make another shirt, not with this fabric, because this kind of is pyjama fabric to me. It does look lovely with the jeans, and I could get away with it, but it might get a bit hot being brushed cotton if I'm wearing it at work or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select some fabric from my stash or maybe secondhand fabric, I'm not sure, I haven't decided yet and I'm going to make another Agnes shirt, just the shirt, for my day-to-day -day wearing. So two other garments that I have made quite recently within the last year that have mismatching buttons from my stash are the Helen's Closet Cameron button-up shirt, which is this one here and the paper cut patterns Ashling dress. So you can see that the buttons are mismatched and I think it just adds a nice detail. You know, your buttons don't always have to match. Sometimes it's nice to have matching buttons, but they don't have to. They're all a similar size, which I think looks really good as well. There's no rules. I mean, you could make them different sizes if you want to, but you can see that they are all slightly different and that is because I just couldn't find enough that matched and then if you have a look at the ones on the sleeves they are different as well the ones on the cuff so you could do this with ready to wear items as well if you wanted to if you buy something from a shop and you don't like the buttons that the people that made it have put on I remember doing that for a couple of coats in the past um, I do make all my clothes now so I don't need to do that anymore but it's always an option if you don't make your own clothes so here is my button stash. As you can see, it's not the most glamorous box. It's this plastic box, but it does the trick. And as you can see, lots of the buttons are color coordinated. So we've got yellows, we've got grays, we've got white buttons, orange. We've got them all together, blue, brown. And in this tin here is where I keep my green buttons because I really love the color green. And most of these buttons have been bought in charity shops over the years or been cut off old garments. So it's just a fun way when you're making something that has buttons. I do have button sets as well from really lovely button makers, which is really lovely to wear like what I'm wearing at the moment. I've got Pigeon Wishes gar uh, buttons on this garment today, which are just stunning. But it is fun to have a look through and see what you've got and how you can use them on the garment that you are making. 
So that is the end of today's YouTube episode. Thank you so much for coming along on today's adventure with me. I hope you enjoyed it. We talked about the ash jeans in detail and then we looked at the Agnes pyjamas that I recently made and looked at my button stash too. I would just like to say thank you so much for all the support that you've shown to my YouTube channel. It is quite new. I really appreciate everyone who's already subscribed and the people that have liked and commented on my videos. It really means a lot to me. So thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely day, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is for you. And I'll see you here again soon for more adventures in sewing.